Okay. So very good evening to all our dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Last week, uh, we studied about the secret uh, in the great uh, pyramid of Giza. So today, uh, we are going to study one more wonder which is uh, mentioned to us in the Bible. Uh, in the uh, book uh, of uh, Ezekiel. Okay. And that uh, uh, wonder what we are going to study is about the river Jordan. So dear brother, uh, uh, we all know river Jordan is one of the important rivers uh, in uh, Israel. The only and the major river uh, which is uh, uh, supplies uh, major of uh, water sources to, to Israel is the river Jordan. Dear brother, uh, we see as soon as we mentioned uh, river Jordan, the thing that comes to our mind is uh, about uh, the immersion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That uh, is the place where our uh, Lord uh, took his uh, baptism. Dear brethren, uh, not only uh, that one, uh, it also uh, remembers uh, the seven dippings of Naaman, how he was uh, cured of his uh, leprosy, and uh, how Elijah and uh, later on Elisha took uh, the mantle and uh, uh, smote the uh, river Jordan and it became into two parts. Dear brethren, <coughs> river Jordan, if you see, uh, it is one of the important uh, rivers in uh, Israel. Uh, dear brethren, the name River Jordan signifies a descender. Why that name descender is given? If you see, that is one of the shortest uh, river uh, in uh, Israel. It just travels uh, uh, a average distance of nearly around 100 miles. But uh, it uh, travels from uh, a very high sea level to the very low sea level in the short distance of this 100 miles. That is the reason uh, the name Descender, I mean Jordan is given for this river. This river begins at Mount Hermon. Mount Hermon is actually 9,300 feet above sea level. From there, the river Jordan forms because of the dew that falls on the Mount Harman. Because of this dew, those dews get accumulated and uh, form four small streams and come to the place called as Lake Hulla. Uh, this is the first place in uh, uh, River uh, Jordan's path. And the Lake Hulla is at the sea level. The, the, uh, the water at Lake Ula is very pleasant and it's very clear and very crystal clear. It is so transparent that you can see even the pebbles uh, uh, down the stream. And uh, the water is very cold and very uh, clean and clear. It is a very good uh, picnic spot also, dear brethren. And from uh, Lake Ula, the water comes to Sea of Galilee. By the time the water comes to Sea of Galilee, it comes so fast that uh, it picks up uh, all the dirt uh, and the mire uh, and uh, all the uh, uh, things, uh, mud and everything uh, as it flows out of uh, Lake Ula and comes to Sea of uh, Galilee. It comes very rapidly, dear brethren. But Sea of Galilee, what comes to our mind? You see, as soon as we mentioned Sea of Galilee, the, kind of the things that comes to our mind is our oh Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is a place that he began his ministry, where he called his 12 disciples, especially Apostle Peter, John, James. They were doing uh, fishing, and that is the time that uh, Jesus called them. And that is the uh, uh, sea where uh, Jesus calmed the Sea of Galilee and even walked on that uh, Sea of Galilee, brethren. From uh, Sea of Galilee, the path of the water continues further and goes to the Dead Sea. It continues in a short distance of nearly 60 miles, but that uh, 60 miles uh, is covered in a very crooked path. You can see the photos here. These are the real photos of River Jordan. 
This is how the water flows into the Dead Sea. It never goes straight deeper than it goes in a crooked, uh, like a snake uh, path and uh, comes to the uh, Dead Sea, dear brethren. And uh, moreover, uh, after leaving the Sea of Galilee, the water is slightly purified, not 100% purified, but it is slightly purified and then comes out of uh, Sea of uh, Galilee, but yet again, he reaches the Dead Sea, but the water is not so completely pure as it was pure on the Mount Harmon. Then it reaches the Dead Sea. Oh, Dead Sea is the lowest part on Earth. It is 1,312 feet below sea level. And the speciality of Dead Sea is that daily 6 million tons of water come into it. But even then, not even a single day, the Dead Sea is overflown and it is completely filled. And moreover, the salt content of the Dead Sea is nearly five times the salt content compared to all the other seas in the world. So daily, if you see 0.85 million tons of salt are poured into this Dead Sea every year. Dear brethren, and uh, because of this high salt content, you know what happens? Nobody gets uh, completely, uh, uh, you see, uh, dissolved in the Dead Sea. They start floating on the uh, Dead Sea. Why? Because of the heavy salt content. Even those who don't want to swim, they can swim in this uh, Ungli Sea. And that is the Dead Sea, dear brethren. And uh, moreover, because of the high salt content, whatever living creature comes into the Dead Sea, it uh, immediately dies off. Whatever fish, how much our fish, it travels from the Galilee Sea, uh, it reaches the Dead Sea, means uh, immediately, as soon as it enters the Dead Sea, it is found to be dead. Why? Because of the high salt content. This is the path of River Jordan. It actually starts from Mount Harbon because of all the dew. All the dew melts at the Mount Harbon and comes and forms the River Jordan at Lake Hula. And from Lake Hula, the water travels in a very fast way, picking up all the mire. Uh, picking up all the dust and the mud, the water becomes so dusty and so muddy that uh, by the time it comes to Sea of Galilee, it is lost its original purity. But once it comes to Sea of Galilee, the water gets slightly purified. From there, after getting slightly purified, the water travels further in a crooked path to the Dead Sea. And the special of the Dead Sea is that. Uh, Dead Sea is not uh, uh, got full even till today. So what is the meaning of this one? What is the uh, uh, plan of God in this one? What is the subject that God has given us in the world, Jordan? Really, dear brethren, God did not simply give the land of Israel for, to the Jews. He gave the land of Israel to the Jews for a particular purpose because lot of God's plan is hidden in the natural and the physical location of the land of Israel. Even River Jordan has got God's plan. Last time we saw no? huh? how uh, you see uh, there's God's plan hidden in the great pyramid. Similarly, God's plan is hidden in this uh, River Jordan. Now, what does it signify, dear brother? This signifies the path of mankind. You see, this signifies the path of Adam, the original father Adam, how uh, he began from the creation and fell into sin and death and sickness. This uh, path uh, signifies uh, the path of mankind. Therefore, if you see mankind, especially Adam, when he was created, he was created perfect in the image of God, in the sight of God, perfectly, you see. But once when he sinned, dear brother, he came in a crooked way 
he got defiled into sin and uh, came and reached the dead sea that means the death this is what uh, we are going to study today in the path of river jordan first of all river jordan begins at the uh, mount harman okay now what does mount harman signify in the bible let us read psalms 133 Verse two and three. Can anybody read Psalms one thirty three two and three? It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bird, even Aaron's bird, and then went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, let me repeat it. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. You see, hey, yeah, what does it say? It says life for evermore. It says very clearly that uh, this uh, Mount Armon, this dew upon the Mount Armon that descended upon the Mount Zion, he is like a huh? the spirit of God. It's like anointing oil, which is compared uh, to the which uh, God poured upon Aaron. That signifies the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It says, "But there, the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore." So that signifies the first life which God gave on this earth to our father Adam, dear brethren. So that harmon, that uh, snow, that the dew, that which uh, melts there, signifies the Holy Spirit through which God created our first uh, uh, person. Adam on this earth, and how was he when he was created? He was created perfect. Uh, he was created sinless. Uh, he had uh, no sin in him. That is the reason that uh, God had given him the kingdom. We have read uh, these things about uh, in Daniel second chapter. Dear brethren, and you see, God created Adam in His own image and gave him the whole authority of this earth to rule on this earth. We read that one also in uh, Genesis. Uh, Uh, one twenty-six. Uh, uh, therefore, we see the then. So Adam was made perfect uh, and uh, very uh, apt in the sight of God, and he was placed uh, in the garden of uh, Eden. That uh, signifies the lake Hula. You see the lake Hula. How we, how is the water, sir? Uh, it we saw that it is at the sea level. That is the level of perfection. Which God created Adam. So once uh, he was created, he was created perfect. He had no impurities uh, in him. He had no sin in him. Huh? Is it not? He was created perfect in the image and likeness of uh, God Abraham. So Adam. This signifies the creation of the perfect man, Adam. But uh, once uh, when Adam sinned, what happened? He lost the kingship, uh, dear brethren. He was thrown out of the garden of Eden into the unfinished earth. Since then, what happened, dear brethren? Since then, the waters got defiled. As the waters leave Lake Hula, the waters get defiled. Now, what is the meaning of waters in the Bible? Let us read Revelation seventeen fifteen. Revelation seventeen fifteen. He said unto me, the waters which do so is where the whore. Seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. See the waters, ah, uh, which those host is uh, the people, the multitudes, the nation and tongues. Dear brethren, it is through this one man Adam that the entire generation of all mankind uh, come out. Uh, that's the reason you see, ah, uh, see the lake Hula uh, was formed. How, ah? Uh, By the mountain dew, it was very a single stream, a very slow stream. Dear brethren, it became into a small, ah, uh, you see, small river. But later on, once it emerged out of Lake Hula, it began to grow. Dear brethren, that is how the generation of Adam began to grow. So he was created perfect. But once when he came out of a garden of Eden. They began to multiply. The whole nation, the entire world, is of this single pair, Adam and Eve. Therefore, the entire generation is of one father, our father Adam. 
let us read acts 17:26 gopal rana brother can you read acts 17:26 okay brother acts 17:26 and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath yes. determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation see hath made of one blood of all nations of men we are all of one blood because we all came out of one father our adam that is the reason we brethren once uh, when the uh, river jordan emerges out uh, uh, it begins to grow into a big uh, river uh, it is not a, a small stream as it is was in uh, lake hulla dear brethren but uh, what happened adam uh, fell into sin you see as soon as the waters come out of uh, lake hulla by the time it reaches sea of galilee the waters get pure impure isn't it the waters get completely mixed with mud and dirt huh? so what does this signify once when adam fell into sin he lost the perfection therefore we read now romans 3rd chapter 10th verse he says huh? there is none righteous not even one oh, everybody has sinned and fallen short of the grace of god in psalm 51:5 also it says now huh? what does it say it says that uh, we are all huh? shapen in iniquity born in sin and shapen in iniquity dear brethren it is because of this one man that sin came into the world we read the, all these things in our first subject huh? remember the first subject what we read huh? ransom isn't it for a perfect man adam perfect jesus christ gave himself a ransom for all how did this sin entered not that everybody have sin it is because of only one man sin let us read that in romans 5 chapter 12 to 14 romans 5 chapter 12 to 14 therefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned for until the law is sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless they thrown from adam to moses even them they had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgression who is the here who is the figure of him that was to come see wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world death by sin and so this death passed upon everybody because for all have sinned so the cause of this sin is only one man adam's sin and this sin came upon everybody hence everybody are dying in uh, adam uh, dear brethren therefore if you see what happens uh, the river gets completely defiled uh, isn't it completely mixed with uh, uh, dirt and mud and everything so what does this uh, signify this uh, signifies the very short period of the first world during the first world the entire generation of mankind was completely infected uh, with uh, sin how how this uh, sin entered in a very short period huh? since uh, adam was created it is just a period of 1656 years in the first world the sin entered into the world because uh, during those days the women were very beautiful to look at and the fallen angels they came and had a relationship with these women and uh, this became sin in the sight of god and so uh, the children born to these uh, women were uh, gigantic giants giants were born during those days they were then uh, so let us read uh, uh, genesis 62 genesis 62 the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful they took wives for them ashish brother your sound is very low read it loudly slowly and perfectly very clearly brother Okay, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they fell fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. See, they took them wives all of which they choose, and uh, you see what happened. Uh, immediately, the chains were born. Dear brethren, is it uh, uh, rightful for an angel to marry the daughters of men? No, angels are never permitted to marry dear brethren. Therefore, we read in Matthew twenty-two thirty and Jude seven, Jesus answers this question, saying, "It is 
uh, they should be like angels in heaven who neither marry nor are given in marriage. In Jude 7, it says that this was a fornication in the sight of God, dear brethren. Therefore, what happened? The chains were born to them. How were they? Who were these chains? Let us read Genesis 6, chapter, verse 4 and 5. Genesis 6, chapter, verse 4 and 5, brother. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God come in unto the daughters of men, and they and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in his sight, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. You see, what happened? Huh? When these uh, sons of God, the angels, uh, came and uh, had a relationship with the daughters of men who were born, giants. Uh, and these are not ordinary giants, but these are very famous giants. Uh, and uh, regarding these, uh, we have studied in the first world. Uh, dear brethren, this class is like a revision. You see, what our classes we already studied, uh, it's just like a revision. Remember the class of three worlds, isn't it? The first world began from the creation of Adam to the flood. Uh, and that is what we're seeing here. Uh, that is the Sea of uh, Galilee. That like, what was completely, what? Uh, completely mixed with mud and dust. Uh, it loses its purity. Similarly, in just a period of 1056 years, mankind lost his uh, perfection in which Adam was created. Therefore, in during those days, giants were born. And how were these giants compared to normal human beings? They were very gigantic, dear brethren, almost nearly 50 feet height. And uh, is there any proof? Uh, if you see, yes, there is a proof regarding these archaeological evidences are found. Even this one is shown in National Geography uh, channels also that uh, during the excavation, the gigantic chains of human beings were found. And who are these chains? These are the Nephilians. And how did these Nephilians come into existence? If you've seen, that is how the fallen angels come into picture. Now, uh, what was the privilege which God had given to the angels in the first world? If you see, the angels were given a special privilege that they could manifest in the flesh uh, from the spiritual nature to the fleshly nature. And whenever they did, did not want to be in the earthly or fleshly nature, they could reverse it and go back to the spiritual nature. This uh, power of manifesting and demanifesting, God had given this one to the angels. Do we have a record of this one in the Bible? If you see, yes, we have a record of this one in the Bible. In Genesis 18, chapter verses 1 and 2, we see the three angels came to the house of Abraham and had food and went to Sodom and Gomorrah. So who are these angels? How did they appear into the flesh? It is because of the power of manifestation and demanifestation. That means coming into the flesh from the spiritual nature and going back to the spiritual nature, this privilege God had given to the angels. Even Jacob the fought with the angel the entire night, isn't it? And Joshua, who saw the angel before him with a sword in his hand, dear brethren, and uh, uh, Gabriel appearing to Daniel and Mary. These are all proof that uh, angels can manifest themselves in the flesh whenever they want. And whenever they don't want, they can uh, demanifest and go back to the spiritual nature. This uh, privilege was given especially uh, during the days of Noah. And the angels, the fallen angels, misused these things and began to have relationship with the women. This was totally in a violation of God's law. Hence, God decided to destroy this first world. Hence, God decided to purify this water at the Sea of Galilee. How did he do that one? God told Noah to build an ark. And Noah built an ark and took all the animals. Clean animals. How many pet did it Noah take? Can anybody tell? Clean animals. How many? Pair. Gopal brother, brother home. Ashish brother, can you tell? How many pairs of animals did uh, Noah took inside the ark? Huh? Are everybody online? Are everybody listening? Six pair, clean. 
seven pairs. Clean is oh, seven oh, pairs. Seven pairs, yes. Good brother. Okay. Huh? And unclean is a single pair. So once what happened? Once uh, all the animals, everything went inside the ark. Uh, immediately there was heavy rain for forty days and forty nights. We read in the Bible, Genesis seven chapter eleven to twelve. But uh, how did this uh, uh, heavy rain uh, come in the first world? While there was no rain at all in the first world, ever then uh, you know we are seeing that God broke the water canopy which was uh, around the whole earth you see there was a water canopy above the sky and god broke this canopy hence all the waters above in the sky it came down as a uh, rain for a period of 40 days and 40 nights they're doing that period what happened all these giants who were born to the angels they got totally submerged huh? in the what happened in the flood and they all died in the flood dear brethren but what happened to these angels the fallen angels who sinned against god they had the power to manifest in the flesh and demanifest and go back to the huh, spirit nature once the flood came what happened huh? immediately they changed the, from the fleshly nature and returned back to the spiritual nature they got escaped where did they go did they go to heaven no, God has kept them, uh, bound them in the earth's atmosphere and reserved them for judgment. Let us read 2 Peter 2.4. 2 Peter 2.4. 2 Peter 2.4. Oh, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them unto sin of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. See? Reserved unto judgment and chains of darkness. Dear brethren, since uh, uh, this uh, water gets purified uh, at Sea of Galilee, uh, that represents the flood. What happened in the flood? All the majority of uh, sin which was committed by the fallen was totally removed. But next, what happened? Uh, next, uh, did the water become 100% purified? Did mankind uh, become uh, totally pure of sin? No. Mankind still continued his sinful path. Where? To reach the Dead Sea. How? Very crooked path, not in a very straight manner. What is the meaning of this one? Then this uh, means uh, God created Adam perfectly, mankind perfectly, but uh, what has mankind done? They have chosen the crooked path leading to death. Let us read Ecclesiastes 7.29. Ecclesiastes 7.29 and Isaiah 59, 7 and 8. So this only have I found that God had made men upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Isaiah 59, God has man made man upright perfectly, but they have sought out many inventions. There they have chosen and selected various different, different path systems. How is that path? Isaiah 59, 7 and 8. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to set innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever go therein shall so not have peace. See, they have made them crooked path, dear brethren. Huh? They do not know the path of way of peace. They know only crooked path. See, whenever the, uh, they deal in a business, they deal in a very crooked path. No straight forward. Isn't it? Everybody choose the crooked path. Now leading to what? Leading to the Dead Sea. And Dead Sea is the lowest part on the earth. What is the meaning of Dead Sea in the Bible? Dead Sea signifies Death. You see, Proverbs 14 12. Proverbs 14 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. See, there is a way. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seems very perfect to man, but end leads to death, dear brethren. Therefore, 
did therefore this uh, dead sea leads to death that is the last uh, point of the dead sea isn't it more about your then you know what is the speciality of dead sea huh? what did we see we saw that it has no outlet even then a huh? lot of water are coming even though lot of water is coming every day even though there is no outlet the dead sea is never full and all the fishes that came into the dead sea they immediately die now what does this signify this signifies the condition of death is there any houseful boat for death huh? so never as the world witnessed the saying that oh death this is sufficient let us see tomorrow no even everybody dies today death is never completely satisfied it is still empty the whole mankind can die even the same day even today still uh, there will be lot of place uh, for lot of uh, uh, people to die again isn't it dear brethren therefore read the bible proverbs 38 chapter verse 15 and 16 proverbs chapter 30 verse 15 and 16 our sleeves are two daughters crying give give there are three things that are never satisfied you first thing say no there are no. three things that are never satisfied four things say not it is enough and means there are four things which never say it is enough it seems so what is the first one you see it says the grave next the barren woman next the earth that is not filled with water the fourth is the fire that says not it's enough the first thing that comes in the bible is grave grave never says it is a full dear brethren there is no huh, place huh, in the graveyard saying that it is houseful we never seen that board dear brethren so this is the death uh, this is the path of mankind this is the grave which ultimately mankind goes into so what is the uh, plan of god is uh, just this one that uh, man kind of uh, uh, was created perfect and later on it sinned and he began to walk in a crooked path and reached death is it the plan of god is it just the plan of god your brethren no beginning from day one till now we have seen that god has a wonderful plan for entire mankind that he is going to resurrect all the dead people and bring them back to life on the same earth to learn the truth which uh, not many are people are listening now now where is it shown in the dead sea it is shown in the dead sea brother here how let us read huh? one verse which says the dead sea the salt sea the waters of the salt sea shall be made sweet end Read that one in Ezekiel forty-seven eight. Ezekiel forty-seven eight. Then say read unto me. Gopal brother, Gopal brother, home brother also can read. Okay brother. Read brother. Then brother. said he unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the Dead Sea, which being brought forth into the Dead Sea. the what water shall be healed see as soon as this water touches the dead sea the waters of the dead sea shall be healed it seems dear brethren what is the meaning of this one what is the water which is spoken of here in ezekiel 47 chapter ezekiel 47 chapter is actually picture of the temple which is given in ezekiel he sees in first one that there is a water a living water coming out of the uh, temple and flows into the dead sea read verse 1 47 1 brother ezekiel 47 1 brother so what he brought me again into the door into the door of the house and behold waters waters issued out from the, under the threshold of the house, the house. east eastward 
for the forefront of the house stood towards the east and the waters came down from uh, under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar this was says from the temple from the threshold waters issued out it seems so waters uh, when did it come it came from the temple dear brother and what happened next let us read verse 3 gopal brother or home brother you can read everybody can read take opportunities and everybody can read one by one and when the man that had the line in his hand went forth sword he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters the waters were to the ankles See? what happened to him sir once the water began to flow from the temple it began to increase slightly slow by slow isn't it first uh, huh? what happened to him ezekiel measured a thousand cubits once if he measured thousand cubits what happened to him sir the water was till the ankles isn't it it was till the foot huh? next uh, what happened again he measures uh, A thousand cubits. This time the waters were uh, till the huh? till the water till the knees. Read Ezekiel forty seven four. Read brother, home brother. Again, he measured one thousand and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured one thousand and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. See, he measured thousand cubits. The water way to his knees. It seems again further he measured thousand cubits. Now the water way uh, to his lions. That is still there. Isn't it? Almost still there. It seems water. It seems again further he measures a thousand uh, uh, cubits. The water was flown so much that uh, Ezekiel was totally immersed uh, in the water. So he can swim in the water. It seems read Ezekiel forty seven five. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, water to swim in a river that could not be passed over. See, water to swim, waters were risen, so he could not pass over. So he could completely immersed in water. Yeah, but then not only that one. Alongside this river, there were what is it, sir? There were trees. There were multiple trees on the sides of the river. Is it, sir? Read Ezekiel, huh? Forty-seven, seven, verse seven. Hmm. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side. And on the other, see there were uh, trees on both the sides of the river. It seems. Now read verse twelve. What were the uses of this uh, uh, tree? Verse twelve. By the river, upon the bank, thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fed. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their water they use they they issued out of the san sorry sanitary and the fruit thereof shall be for meat. And the leaf thereof for medicine. See, the fruit thereof shall be for meat, uh, and leaf for the medicine. It seems, dear brethren. So these were life-giving uh, trees, uh, dear brethren. And not only that one, you know, one more speciality. Wherever the river went, all the dead fishes came back to life. It seems. Verse nine. Uh, verse nine. Oh, go back, brother. Read, brother. Verse nine. 
come to pass that everything that lived which moved uh, with their with theirs over the river shall come shall leave and there shall be a very great multitude of fish because these waters shall come thither for they shall be healed and everything shall leave whither the, the river come okay. everything shall leave wherever the river comes whenever wherever place the river goes immediately all the dead fishes come back to life it seems that they run you see and not only the sun they were fishermen sitting on either side of the seashore it seems you read that in verse 10 uh, okay then uh, what is the meaning of this one what is the meaning of this river that came out of the temple about the same river it is given in revelation 22nd chapter also let us read revelation 22 verses 1 and 2 Ashish, brother, read, brother. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lord. A little bit louder. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear Very as good. crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on the either side of the river was a tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. See? What happens in the same river of life uh, is given there. On either side of the river, they were life-giving trees, it seems. Uh, again, the leaves were for healing of the nations, it seems. They used to give uh, different types of fruits in every season, it seems. And it was for uh, uh, for uh, Eating purpose, it seems that you then now what is the meaning of this one? Same picture what we read in Ezekiel is given in Revelation. Therefore, Ezekiel 47 chapter, Revelation 22nd chapter, they both are parallel chapters. Where Revelation 22 he says the waters flow from the throne, but in Ezekiel it says the water is coming from the temple. Now these both are one and the same. Actually, where is the throne? The throne is inside the temple. And from the temple only, this uh, water of life uh, begins to flow. You see, on either side, what is there, Simsa? The trees of life. Uh, you can read that one when you are free in the house. Both Ezekiel 47 chapter and Revelation 22nd chapter, parallel chapters. In fact, book of Ezekiel itself is a parallel to book of Revelation. Both are very symbolic. The Old Testament revelation, if you see, that is called as Book of Ezekiel. Therefore, they then here, what happens? Huh? Huh? A sea, a river, a water comes from the throne, which is in the temple. It came and touches the river Jordan, the Dead Sea. Immediately it is healed. What is the meaning of water in the Bible? Read Habakkuk 2.14. And John 4, chapter, verse 14. Read, brother. Gopal, brother, Ashish, brother, home, brother. Three of you can read one of the verses. Two, 14. 14, brother. Huh? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See? Huh? Earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. So water in the Bible means water. It represents the truth. Therefore, Jesus said, no, if any man believes on me, huh, out of him, out of his belly, the living waters shall flow. Dear brother, here, now, what is happening? From the church, here and there, little bit of uh, small, small uh, streams are flowing now. Isn't it? The water of truth is flowing now. But once when the church is totally complete, huh? a temple is totally complete, when the church is seated on the throne of uh, Jesus Christ and ruled for a thousand years, during that ruling period, during that kingdom, what happened? From this throne, from this church, uh, this water shall flow to the world. It shall come and touch uh, the dead world. It is, 
it will flow from the church in the thousand years dear brother never what happened huh? how this uh, truth will go to the whole world will it go at a single time isn't it will it go very fastly at once no what did ezekiel do he measured a thousand cubit then again measured a thousand cubit then again measured a thousand cubit first it was to the ankle next to the knee next to the lines and next was totally immersed similarly dear brethren in the thousand years this knowledge of the truth shall reach the whole mankind slowly one by one one by one isn't it thousand cubits after thousand cubits thousand cubits after thousand cubits dear brethren therefore once if it reaches the dead sea the dead world what happens all the fishes came back to life it seems what is the meaning of fishes in the bible jesus said no meaning of fishes you tell me what is the meaning of fishes brother home meaning of uh, fishes hmm? as a uh, as a the fisher man it can kind of a meaning of the uh, he, he fishes man also ah, you see jesus said no to the disciples come leave all your fishing business come and follow me i will make you fishers of men that means fishers in the bible represents the men therefore whenever the fish came and fell into the dead sea what happened it was totally dead mankind when he grows to the grave what happens he is dead that is a condition of death but once when the river of truth touches each and every mankind what happened to them this dead fishes will again come back to life in the resurrection in the thousand years everybody shall be resurrected dear brethren and moreover what we saw in 12th verse we says on either side there were trees bearing 12 different fruits each and every season and the leaves were for killing isn't it what is the meaning of tree in the bible huh? in psalms first chapter verses 1 to 3 it says the the writers are compared to the trees isn't it uh, you know this verses very well uh, we have bought it from even from childhood no the writers people the church they are the trees on either side of the river who give meat and uh, leaves for the entire mankind uh, see for a tree uh, leaf is the life for a tree if there is no leaf for a tree it doesn't live so life means medicine dear brethren uh, isn't life and leaf means medicine the life of the church will be used as a medicine for the whole world in the thousand years for the purpose of healing It, they will take their examples to come out of sin in the thousand years and uh, it gave various uh, fruit systems it was for energy and for food to strengthen them dear brethren and uh, moreover what do we see we saw that on either side of the sea they were fishermen who were sitting and doing the fishing it seems now who are these people who will do fishing of men in the thousand years isn't it in psalms 45 we read now in the subject of three world huh? john the baptist you see from abel till john the baptist all the ancient worthies that are mentioned in book of hebrews 11 chapter they will all come back to life isn't it on the same earth even abraham isaac jacob everybody john the baptist everybody Daniel, Moses, everybody will come back to the same earth, back to life. And what will they do? They will be ministers in all the world. They are the ones who will do this fishing business in the thousand years. That means put the truth for the mankind and bring them to the truth. This fishing business is doing. Huh? This is being doing by the just now, but in the thousand years it will be done by the ancient word is dear brethren but uh, uh, one last thing uh, we need to mention dear brethren it says uh, that all the places were healed wherever uh, this water touched but there were few places it began to continue to be dry that is given in ezekiel 47 11 read brother ezekiel 47 11 brother but the mighty places thereof and the marishes thereof shall not be healed 
shall, uh, shall be given to salt. He shall be given to salt. But some of the places shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. That means in the thousand years, even after giving the truth to everybody, there will be few people who don't want to accept the truth, who want to still continue into the path of sin. These shall be destroyed in the second death. Dear brethren, this is the beautiful plan of God that is beautifully shown in the path of River Jordan from Mount Arbon to the Dead Sea. Okay? Hope you are all have understood the class. If anybody has any doubts, we can definitely ask. We will try to clarify whatever is possible from the scriptures.